Hello, uh, everyone. My name is Manu Sakya, and let me welcome you all in this SLS Talk uh, episode 25. Today, we have invited uh, Mr. Uh, Shui Liu. He is a second year PhD student. Let me quickly give a very small, uh, very short uh, uh, introduction. Uh, Shui Liu is a second year PhD student at Nanyang Technological University. Uh, in Singapore here, of course, with us. Uh, and he's under the supervision of Professor Tong uh, Gao. And his uh, research uh, focuses on spatial temporal data mining, artificial intelligence, machine learning. And uh, before he joined NTU, he was mm -hmm. uh, a student in Peking University. He completed his bachelor's degree from Peking University. And uh, let me uh, also congratulate Shui Liu because okay. this paper okay. uh, is oh, okay. accepted uh, okay. accepted in ICLR, if I'm not wrong, ICLR 2023. So without uh, further ado, uh, Shui Liu, uh, mm -hmm. you can start uh, the presentation and the title of course is multivariate time series imputation. It's gonna be a very interesting, I'm pretty sure about that. So I request all the participants to mute uh, for during the presentation. And once the presentation is over, you can unmute yourself and directly ask a question. Or if you cannot ask a question, then what you can do is you can write uh, your questions in the chat box and I will read that out uh, for you. So without further ado, let's welcome Shui Liu. And uh, Shui Liu, you can start your presentation. Okay, thank you for the host. And hello everyone, and this is Shui Liu. And today what I want to share is our group's paper, multivariate time series imitation with disentangled temporal representations, and it is accepted by this year's iClear. And my sharing today will be divided into the several parts, and in the later several minutes, and I will introduce them separately. And firstly, as we know, time series data can be seen everywhere in our daily life. Just to give a few examples, the first which we will see every day, from the traffic speed data to the road occupation data and to all the other things. And they can all form the time series. And also environmental data from the AQI, the PM2.5, to the weather, to the temperature, to the moisture. And the second time series is the economic data from the exchange rate to the uh, stock market. And also there are many other kinds of time series data and uh, uh, they are all among our daily lives. But however, the real world multivariate time series data often has some missing values. And the reason why there are missing values can vary from a lot of reasons. To name a few, like the device malfunction, also like the communication failure between the data collection part to the data processing part or from the data processing part to the data analyze part. And also we know that the device to collect these data are very expensive. Thus due to this costly measurements, many of the time series data are missing. Let's see an example. The right picture shows the traffic condition in Westminster, London, UK. And we can see that the green sections means the road where all the time series observations are get during the whole time period. And the yellow lines means some of the time period their observations are missed. And the red lines means the road sections where all observations are missed during the whole time period. The time period I select here is about six months. And we can see that the red lines are very scarce, which means that many of the time series data are gapped, but uh, the yellow lines has occupied a lot during these row sections, which means that by far or less, some of the 
traffic road data are missed due to the above reasons or other reasons. And also we can see that after we merged these traffic observations into a time series matrix, as I have depicted in the left, many of the positions, their values are not a number, which also, mean, which also means that uh, there are many missing values in the time series. And we know that many of the time series analyze approaches, whether from the prediction to classific classification models, they just assume that the time series are intact and also are all complete. Thus, if there are missing values in time series, it might cause the performance degradation, or rather it might make these analyzed approaches in a clock book. In order to solve this, there are many imputation methods proposed. Some wants to first impute the time series then to predict or to classify. And some models want to carry on the imputation and the downstream analyze together. In the traditional imputation methods, like to simply use the mean, use the medium, or use KNN and mice, they regard the time series with some linear dynamics, or they think the variables between different time series have somewhat the similarity. But this model Models, just as many papers said, they lack the ability of modeling nonlinear dynamics in time series. And also they cannot model the complex correlations very correctly. Thus, compared to the following deep learning methods, they may not perform well in practice. And in recent years, the deep learning based imitation methods have been proposed widely from BR. ITS, GAN, NAOMI, SGN, also to this year's Teeter and TimesNet. And many of these models based on RNN with some other tasks and uh, adversarial trainings. And they can achieve better results than the earlier classic imputation methods. But these models, they use only one hidden state, which means the only one single entangled representation to model the dynamics of a time series. But we know that in the real world uh, occasions, the time series can be combined by many rich and meaningful factors, such as the trend, the seasonality, or in some articles, the periodicity, and also the local characteristics. Thus, if we only use one hidden state, one single entangled representation, to model these factors. And this kind of re representation might be compromised to these orthogonal factors. And thus, this kind of combination might not give a very good modeling and a very good performance to impute the time series. Given by the, uh, mo the, the background, novel multivariant time series imputation method. In short, it is called Teeter. The full name is time series imputation with disentangled temporal representations. Uh, compared to the previous models, we used different uh, disentangled representations to model the complex dynamics in time series. And each of the disentangled representation can account for a different meaningful factor. In how to achieve this kind of disentanglement, I will uh, introduce it in, in detail after the methodology part. But in short, we impose different forms of constraint and regularizations on different representations. And this kind of uh, representation can offer teeter or interpretable and explainable perspective of imputation. And what's more, since teeter is a matrix factorization based model, it is very scalable. It can be applied to long data sets and achieve much better imputation performance, which we, we will see in our experiment part. And before introducing the models and the methods, 
we can first go to the problem statement part. Um, we give n univariate time series data, x1 to xn, collected over t time steps. We can form it into a matrix X, where each row means one univariate time series data in during the t time steps. Each column means the different time series collected in one time step. And as we see before, this kind of matrix is incomplete. There are many missing values. And in order to better show which where the missing values are in, we denote a mask metric as M, which is very similar to the imputation methods, where if the time series matrix X, the corresponding position is observed, then the corresponding value in M is one. If else, then the corresponding value in M is zero. So what we want to do is to use the observed values in matrix X to fill in and impute the unobserved values. And then we go to the methodology part. And the core idea of Tether is to decompose the multivariate time series data metric X into two latent factors, where the factor U only preserve the characteristics unique to each instance. And factor V is determined by multiple disentangled representations that jointly capture the temporal dynamics. And this structure is somewhat the same to the MF models, but the difference is that the MF models only used one entangled representation, which means that the factor V is a whole one. But now we divided in it into VT, VS, and VT, which means the trend, seasonality, and bias metric. In the objective of Tether is formed as the equation five, and we can uh, regard it separately. The first term is just uh, very similar to the MF structures. We want the production of U and V to be as similar to S as possible. But due to there are many missing values in X, we only want the observations, the observed values to be as same to X as possible. And the second and third term means the constraint and regularization for VT and VB. And the last two terms are the L2 regularization for U and V, which can help to avoid or lessen the overfitting problems. And here V is the concatenation for trend, seasonality, and bias matrix. And U, A is an augmented matrix for U. And in the later part, I will introduce VT, VS, and VB separately. Firstly, let's go to the VT, the trend representation metric. It characterizes the intrinsic trend of time series. As we find that the evolution patterns dominated by the trend matrix is supposed to change gradually and smoothly. And it will not change very drastically during the time period. Thus, we impose a smoothness constraint on the trend matrix VT. It is an L2, L2 constraint between the adjacent time period. And for the seasonality matrix, as, as you can see in a previous objective, there are no constraints or no regularization on, on VS. The reason is that the structure of VS is carefully designed as we does not need to constrain it more. And we know that in many real world scenarios, time series data often demonstrate the seasonal patterns. For example, in traffic data, we have the daily seasonality and also the weekly seasonality. For climate data, we have the seasonal periodic and the yearly periodic. Thus, we model this kind of seasonality by using Fourier basis. Here, the omega 
is determined by the internal period of time series. And metric A and B are the parametric matrix which we will learn by tier. And since the, the dimension of A and B is not very big, thus the parameters here in A and B to learn are not very big. The third term is the bias representation matrix. As previous VT and VS, they jointly determine the global dynamics and also this kind of dynamics is driven by exogenous expansion factors. But also we know that there are also various exter external factors. For example, whether it is a holiday, whether it is weekends or weekdays, and also in traffic, whether it has car accidents or not. And these factors will also affect the real world time series. And also these factors occurs randomly and at specific time points. And when this kind of accidents and factors happens, they will yield local variance with very short period and in the same kind of constraint. Thus, given enlightened by TRMF, we propose to learn another bias representation magic VB. As we can see, it is a constraint like the auto regression. And during the very short time lag, we want the VT to be decided by the auto regression within the previous very small time lag. And also, why we does not add VB to the uh, some of the result of VT and VS. It is enlightened by the user and item bias in recommendation system. And in this, in this circumstance, the, the dimension of VB will be smaller than VT and VS. That will create less parameters. And the next uh, part is the adaptive weight for trend and signality. As we can see in the left picture, the scale of trend and seasonality in a time series is not always the same. And the importance of the trend and seasonality can vary a lot across different time series data. Thus, if we merely use a one-to-one -one proportion uh, to model the trend and seasonality, then the results might sway away from the reality. Thus, we adopt a learnable parameter alpha to adaptively adjust the weight for these two components. And given by this, the equation we have mentioned before, the objective for teeter, uh, can be changed from the above to the, to the below. The only difference is how to concat VT and uh, VS. And after the methodology part, then we will go to the data description part. Here we use three typical data sets. The Guangzhou data set, it is an anonymous traffic, traffic data. And the number of instances N and the number of time steps T are all very small. Every model can fit in this data set. The solar energy one has a very, very large T. And the Westminster data set has a very large number of instances. And since this is a multivariate time series data, thus we discard the spatial correlations in Westminster data set. And here is the result for Peter compared with other baselines. And we test our results in two different missing rates, 0 0.2 and 0 0.4. And we can find that in most cases, our proposed teeter has achieved the best performance. And also uh, when N or T is very large, some models may go into out of memory and mostly they are deep learning methods. And what's more, we can find that Teeter is much more, uh, bad, it's much better than the other compared models in solar energy. The data set with very large T. 
and I will leave this page for about more 10 minutes, 10 seconds for you to, to compare it. And then we will go to the scalability part. As we can find in the previous two tables, many deep learning models will go into and out of memory. Thus, here I carry on the scalability test on Westminster dataset. I compare the memory usage of different methods varies over n, and also the memory usage of different methods vary over t and also the average training time. As we can see is that in all these three settings, Tether has occupied the least uh, uh, memory and the least training time, which has shows its scalability compared to the deep learning methods. And then in order to show the effectiveness of all these three patterns of all these three feature matrix, we conducted the ablation study. And uh, we can find that the model performance drops, no matter which of the representation metrics is removed. And this can validate that all of our proposed uh, uh, representations play an important role in imputation, and they jointly enhance the performance of Tether. And also there is an interesting part is that when we discard the bias part, it is uh, the best compared to the other two ablation models, which means that uh, sometimes bias are not frequently uh, occurs during the time period. Thus discarded will have the least influence. Then we will go to a case study we will show that that what Tether has actually learned. Here we test it on two synthetic data sets, where one is composed with same trend but different seasonality. One is composed with different seasonality but the same trend. And after validating the result for VT and VS, we can find that the disentangled patterns, which are supposed to be close to each other, they actually look similar. For in the left picture, it is composed with same same seasonality and different trend. The right one is composed of same trend but different seasonality, and they can disentangle and show very clearly. And the last experiment I want to show here is a parameter sensibility. You know, we can see that the performance of Tether against the different parameter settings are very stable. Even with the hyperparameter P, it is a periodic of time series. The performance is also very stable. Thus, we can draw a conclusion is that if the accurate imputation is the primary objective for the model or for this problem, then we might not need to intensively tune in the hyperparameters for this model is very stable. But if we both want the accuracy and the explanatory, then we, we shall determine the appropriate time series period. And how to get this kind of period, it can be achieved through prior knowledge of time series or from other periodic detection models. In, in my future works, how to uh, update the kind of computer, and there are several kind of directions. The first way is that, as we, can, as we can see, now we have no constraint on you. So that's how to uh, design a constraint on you. It's worth researching. Now, the periodic is a hyperparameter given by the users. How to find a data-driven way to get the periodic, it is, it is also worth research. And the second point is that many imputation models, they can also be extended to prediction. And also since our model has learned the internal factors of time series, we think that our model can also extend to prediction, to classification, and to many other time series analyze scenarios. 
and how to extend Teeter to this kind of analysis. And it is another, I think, very interesting part. So that is all for my sharing about our paper now. And thank you for listening. And if you have some questions or suggestions, please do not hesitate to ask and propose. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Shui Liu. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for the presentation. And uh, although I'm not uh, from this area, mm -hmm. uh, I found it uh, really interesting. I mean, the problem statement that you are dealing with is really, really interesting, I guess. So uh, uh, I request participants, if you have any queries related to uh, this multivariate uh, time series problem, uh, uh, please, you can write it in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and then directly ask question to uh, Shui Liu. Uh, before we receive any questions from the participants, uh, Shui Liu, uh, let me ask one question. Um, uh, what is this uh, parameter uh, sensitivity and why why, why, why do you think like this this parameter sensitivity is really important in in your experiment phase? And also, for we know that in the uh, recent years there are many deep learning methods, mm -hmm. and some methods have got their good quality or good performance due to a, due to an extensive hyperparameter tuning. And okay. also, if we change one of these hyperparameter, and their performance might drop very greatly. Mm -hmm. So we think that this kind of performance or this kind of superiority might not hold water for or for many circumstances. And also, it will need the users to tune a lot, and it will spend a lot of time and resources to do it. And we think that it is might not be a very good model. So we want to see that if our model are stable under different settings. And if it is, then the users might not carry on a lot of tunings in order to get a good performance. And just to use some kind of reasonable parameters, they will also get a very acceptable result. Oh, okay. Okay, so, uh, so the experiment results are positive. Uh, I mean, like they are stable uh, in terms of parameter sensitivity. Mm, pardon? Uh, I mean, uh, wh wh what did you find? Like, Tida, is it like uh, okay with the parameter sensitivity? Yeah, we can find that when the parameter changes a lot, mm -hmm. all of this, this matrix does not change greatly, which can show that Tier is a very stable method oh, compared to a different oh. hyperparameter settings. Okay. Okay, and then uh, in in the previous slide also, I noticed mm -hmm. uh, in the accuracy slide, I think there is there's when you show us the table there, yeah, this one, mm -hmm. I noticed that there is only one data uh, with the CSDI uh, in in the Guangzhou there, in the Guangzhou yeah. column there. I noticed that uh, MAE has performed, I mean CSDI has performed uh, better in terms of MAE. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so what might be the reason for that one? Like, I, what I can see is like uh, Tider is performing very well in most of the cases, right? Yeah. Uh, Guangzhou Solar Energy and West, uh, what is this Westminster? So there is only one uh, data that is not, you know. Yeah, yeah, we know. Yeah. So, so I was wondering, like, what could be the reason for that? Is there uh, sadly, there... we are now still exploring the reason for CSDI. Mm -hmm. We know that it is a very, very powerful model, and it was oh, accepted okay. just recently, just recently in last year's new reefs. Uh, okay. The, the reason for this paper is it's used like the Bayesian or some other kind of metrics. So mm -hmm. we are now trying to explore the reason why we cannot beat uh, CSDI in these settings, and maybe after. Uh, we got this kind of reason we can share with you in some sure. kind of channels. Right, right, right. Thanks. Thanks, man. And uh, one more question from my side. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so you have considered these three data sets, Guangzhou, Solar Energy, and Westminster, yeah. three data sets. 
will fulfill whatever the objectives that you have set for this this project work right so mm -hmm. uh like uh are these data sets uh enough for your experiments i mean uh is there any kind of uh thing that you you want to bring on bring in regarding the data set itself or these data sets more than enough for your experiments and we think that the three data sets we choose are the three very typical data sets the first data set is a very small one right right so i was i was i was just to, mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt uh Shui. for example i was thinking a data set that has like bigger number of instances and bigger number of time steps mm. would that be possible I mean, or maybe that kind of data set may not be useful in your in your case. I don't know. Um, just just a you know curiosity. Yeah, uh, the reason why we choose this data set is is firstly we want to find that the effectiveness or the uh, performance of all these values in mm -hmm. the small, long, or big data sets. And at first, we does not know that these models will go into the auto memory. But we think that if our model can outperform all the baselines in these kind of scenarios, mm -hmm. that means that for all the data, we might have some good performance since these three are very typical ones. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Shailu. Uh, I think uh, if uh, our participants uh, they have not, uh, you know, sent any queries uh, for now, but uh, they might go through your paper. I think the paper is available in openreview.net, yeah. I guess. So yeah. uh, participants can go through that uh, paper. And then if there is any queries, then they can directly contact uh, you, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is that is that okay, Shailu? Yeah, it's welcomed. Yeah, yeah. Shailu, uh, once again, let me... Uh, say congratulations on behalf of SL, SLS uh, group or SACJC group because it's, it's it's very tough to to get accepted from ICLR kind of you know very very A plus kind of uh, conferences so um, uh, and uh, let me thank you once again uh, accepting our invitation and giving a presentation about your work and definitely uh, uh, we're going to upload this video uh, online and many researchers will definitely get benefited from your work and they might probably contact you in in future also thank you once again thank you so much and uh in 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 mars again we are coming with another uh sls talk probably to sls talk episode 26 and that's going to be as interesting as this one also i guess and mm -hmm. uh, thank you uh once again so you have any anything to say and also thank you for hosting this wonderful lecture. And it's my honor to share with all of you about my research. Thank you again. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, our, our pleasure. Have a good day, man. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, participants. Well. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. All right. Yeah.